Greetings students, this is going to be a video demonstration on how to solve the problems using Wolfram Mathematica. So you'll do some pen and paper calculations and you can use the Mathematica software to manipulate the equations and to substitute results and work out derivatives and integrals and so on and so forth. So I'll use as an illustrative example the previous problem isosceles triangle on top of a rectangle, work out the neutral axis, work out the stresses of centroids at the, at the points with a specified values of geometries and bending moments. So let's go ahead and um, try and solve the problem. Okay, so if you have Mathematica installed on your system, you can use it directly. So this is Wolfram Mathematica. This is version 12.3. It's about four gigabytes of data to download. And when you unpack it, unzip it, and install it on your computer, it'll take about 10 gigabytes of data on your computer. Now, if you don't have that kind of data and a space on your laptop, you can always use the free version, not the free version, the Wolfram Cloud version that sits on the internet. So you go to Wolfram Cloud, you register on your system, and when you want to start, you say quit kernel to refresh all the, the items. Now, on your website, Going to resize it. Okay. On the left is the Wolfram Cloud. And on the right is the equations that we want to solve. So we had the geometry. We expressed everything in terms of one unknown, which we chose as H2. So we type on the keyboard, H1 is equal to H2 plus It's the expression. It's H1, H2 is the unknown, U plus H4 is equal to minus T over 2. We want to work out the neutral equation. Uh, using that integral equation. That integral, y dA, is the area times the distance from the centroid to the neutral axis, and similarly the area, integral y dA, is the area times the distance from the centroid to the neutral axis. Um, the area of a triangle is half base times height, so that will just be b times h over 2 from the centroid to the neutral axis is h1. So we say y bar 1 is equal to h1, and we've already defined h1 in terms of h2. We have the expression. Over 2 is the area of a rectangle. This would be the breadth times the height, which is t. So that would be b times t. And then I bar 2 is the distance from the centroid to the neutral axis, which is by definition h2. Shift and enter. Now we have this equation. Uh, the integrals is the area times the distance from the centroids, and we know all of this is equal to 0. But before we can get to that, we have to specify and construct the equation. So we'll just say q is equal to e1 times this integral, which is the area 1 times y bar 1. That 
times the integral two times and the integral times a2 times enter we have that expression we know the expression is equal to zero we have to solve that expression for the unknown which is h2 so what we can just do is we can say our solution s is equal to the expression when it is equal to zero and we are solving for h2 shift and enter h2 is that value now we need to back substitute and make it explicit because it's inside the double curly brackets the trip the trick that we use is we just say some variable, whatever it is, let's just call it a, is equal to slash dot answer from s, and s has this h2. So that is the trick that we use. The slash dot operator, you can Google it in your own time. So I've put all of this, I've equated it to a2, and I can just say a, h2 is now a. And that is the value for h2 in that expression. It looks slightly different, but it's mathematically equivalent. h1, if we specified in h2, h1 is h2 plus t over 2 plus h over 3, h over 3 plus t over 2 plus what h2 was. So now we've had the expressions for h1 and h2. To work out the bending stresses, we need the moment of inertias. And the moment of inertia for region 1, it's a triangle. Region 2, it is a rectangle. We know the standard formulas uh, at the centroids. And to translate it to the distance uh, away from the neutral axis will be the original value plus area times distance squared. The value at the centroid plus this area times the distance squared. So this will be the expression plus the area A1 times H1 squared. And I2 would be the moment of inertia for this, plus this area times the H2 squared, which is what we have over there. So let's go ahead and do it. I1, moment of inertia of the triangle, it is B times H cubed over 86 plus area times distance. And we work it out. We have an expression. I2 is rectangle B breadth height cubed over 12 cubed over 12 area 2 times H2 squared shift and enter. We have a symbolic expression. Now we can put that into the expression for the bending moments. I1 is equal to this m times y1 times e1 plus e2 times i2 we have an expression um, we can just use our mouse we can copy it control c we can paste it and then we can just edit it slightly sigma 2 is minus y2 e2 over there we've got everything in terms of symbolic expressions now we want to work out the actual numerical values how do we do that um, we can just say h1 numerical is equal to uith brackets so we're substituting with the width expression Curly brackets, we put in the values. H is equal to 0 0.045. If we just type in 0 0.045, it will assume we only know it to three decimals, but we want to put in the exact value. So we just say 45 over 1000 to 65 over um, T is equal to 72 over um, M is equal to 6427, 6427, 187 times 9, 
96 times 10 to the 96 times 10 to the power 9. Close the curly brackets and then we say we want to evaluate evaluate h1. Close, close, enter. And then we've got an exact expression for h1. We can then do exactly the same for h2. Copy. all of the data and we want to evaluate for h2 not uh, an exact expression for h1 and h2 similarly we can work out for sigma 1 and sigma 2 so i'm just going to copy it for v 1 I'm evaluating all of this, but remember now sigma 1 needs the value for y1. Um, so we need to put in the additional value, and we need to say y1 is equal to h1 numerical. And of course we want to work out for the symbolic expression sigma 1. We have this very... Um, complicated expression for sigma 1 in irrational form. Use control C again, press control V, sigma 2 numerical, and we want to work out now with y2, y2 is equal to h2 numerical and the expression we want to put all of that into is sigma 2. Here we get the answer. Now, when we do the calculations, there are different ways of working out the number of decimals. So typically we can say number form this expression to so many digits and that is how we can work it out. So that is typically the expression. If we just wanted to n digits, five digits or 10 digits, number form, square brackets, the expression number. If we wanted to certain precision, we put a curly bracket, the number of digits and the number of decimal points. So this is these answers, h1 numerical, h2 numerical, and uh, sigma 1 numerical, this is in meters, this is in meters, this is in pascals, and this is in pascals. We can convert it now to um, millimeters and megapascals. So we can say h1 in millimeters is equal to 1 times 10 to the power 3 plus h1 numerical. And then that is the exact expression. And then we can just uh, N, control V, two in millimeters times H2 numerical, shift and enter. We have it over there. And then of course we can do the same thing for sigma one and sigma two. Shift and enter. I have that expression, and then sigma two would we'll just use control I have that expression. So if I want an answer in floating format, I can say H. of um, H1 um, we can just copy and paste it if we need to let's just say 10 decimals and 
this do is we can say just type it up 9537 over 217 15 decimal places got the answer h2 answer is equal to numerical um, minus 1530 over 217 15 decimal places that's the answer in millimeters that's the answer in millimeters answer is equal to numerical the expression is all of that so we'll say this one six three four five one four six over four two nine three four six nine and we want that to let's say fifteen decimal and then sigma two answer equal to numerical um five one five one oh seven five eight two five zero over uh four two seven three four six nine four six nine and we get the answer so at the end of the day the final answer is H1 43949, 43949, 307, etc. H2 minus 7.051, minus 7.050069, so on and so forth. Sigma 1 minus 38, minus 38, 269758, etc. Sigma 2, 11959, 119529. We can make it too many decimal places as, as much as we need to. So let's just um, say we want this to 25 decimal places. We want this to 55 decimal places. That's how we can do it in Mathematica. So what we do is, in Mathematica, we type it in our expressions in symbolic form. We set up the equation. We can solve the equation. We can put the answer in the equation into a variable. We can manipulate the equations using the symbolic form. We can substitute the previous answers into a very long, complicated expression. And when we want it to arbitrary decimal places, we put in the exact values. So if we only know it to 0 0.045, Mathematica will assume we only know it to three decimals, and it won't carry all the decimal figures. So if we want to know it's exactly 0 0.045, we say 45 over 1,000. If it's exactly 0 0.065, we say 65. We always use the fractions if we put it in exact form. If we put it in decimal form, then we only know it to so many decimal places. So that is the, how we use Mathematica in symbolic terms to work out the answers to as many places as we need to. So this was the problem. I explained in the previous video how to do it and in Wolfram Mathematica it is just 20 lines of computer code and we can work it out to as many decimal places as we need to and uh, I think that's where we will end the video thank you very much keep well